All right, a key player in all of this is Morgan Lucas, Lucas OLCO, Lucas Stadium. Of course, you, you know that whole name. It's, it's ubiquitous with kind of cool stuff. Not so cool in the oil markets these days, maybe for you and seeing the uptick in prices. It, 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 it is your livelihood. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering what you make of what's going on. I, well, to be honest, it's scary. Um, yeah. And for us as a company that doesn't refine oil, we actually purchase finished products. Um, the target moves a little bit faster. It uh, does, doesn't it? It really Sometimes does. It's like within hours. Yes, so. and, and we... Is this overdone? I think so. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of knee-jerk reactions that happen in our space, but for us, we have to be able to pivot. We have to be able to uh, be efficient as a company to accommodate or allow for these changes to happen and, and, and help our customers out. I, I can understand the rationale, and the senator was just getting into it, Morgan, this idea of taking out Iranian oil positions, and no doubt that might be a smart strategy to sort of decapitate Iran, but by the same token, oil prices globally would, would soar on such a move. Uh, does it have sort of like a double-edged sword feeling to it? Oh, it does. I, I feel like Israel has the right to defend themselves. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it's a, a very controversial topic right now. But uh, for us and, and for our company, I think we look at things that we are producing so much oil right here domestically. And when you consider exports versus imports, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. We should be more energy independent, but independent in this situation. And I think yeah, that it would where we wouldn't be reliant on these developments. Would I, I agree, which is why I, I tend to lean towards Trump's position on things. We do need to get energy costs down. We do need to worry so about all the in on consumer. all types of energy. Exactly. Right? Yes. Well, let me ask you a little bit about that because then there is the demand issue, and we're getting increasing signs right now, Morgan, that it's slowing. Uh, Stellantis with disappointing sales numbers. That stock was sliding. We've seen the same out of Ford briefly. Tesla, even though the numbers were pretty good, a little less than some had hoped. So there does seem to be a trend with some of these auto guys when they're coming out with numbers, not across the board, that they're slowing. Let's say they, they are slowing. And then I'm wondering, given that and, and, you know, these international oil agencies that are reporting declining demand globally, what, what are we in for? You know, I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the situation. Um, you know, the suit that I'm wearing, uh, so many products just on a daily basis involve petroleum products. Uh, and when you consider uh, the demand that's still there and the amount of the volume of cars, the actual decline of sales of EVs, um, I, I think it's just too much government intervention in this marketplace. I'm a free market kind of guy. So uh, left unfettered, leave these guys alone, let average folks decide where, where this all goes. Well, I agree. I think that there's a lot of controversy over EVs, I think there's a place for both, to right. be honest with you. I think if people want to drive a, a smartphone on wheels, you know, I think that's great. Have that. It's, it's a really quiet and probably a, a fun car to drive. Well, this is affecting some of the traditional gas-powered cars as well. So, so I, 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 the bigger picture is demand could slow, and mm -hmm. you're quite right. Slow is not meaning reversing. But, but I, I want to get your thought with that and a possible lengthy port strike coming. What are we in for economically? Some people say inflation all over again, stagflation possibly. What do you think? Well, to be honest, I think, uh, as I said before, I think anything's on the table. It depends on how long this lasts. I think that, um, you know, you look out west, automation was, in, you know, implemented in some of the shipping harbors out there. We've been through this already. We know how bad this can affect our world and our space. Uh, for this to be happening, it seems much more of a agreed stance than anything. Um, but I'm not living that life. I'm not in those. You're talking about the people. union push, the Sherman's yes. push to, to stop it on the automation. Well, you yes, can't it, stop progress. No, exactly. they're, they're just trying to slow it. But obviously, come in with the opening pitch being stop it already. You yeah. think that's un unrealistic? Well, I, I completely think it's unrealistic. In our company, we look at automation like an opportunity. We didn't have to lay any employees off. We actually allowed ourselves to manufacture, be more efficient. And I see that as a completely uh, horrible argument from them at that point. Okay. Thank you very much, Morgan. Good, good seeing you, Morgan Thank Lucas. Thank you very much. Uh, 